Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this old beast is a Radeon HD 6950. Lately I've been obsessed with finding older 40 graphics cards that sound quite repairable and trying to do exactly that. This 2GB card from 2010 has an apparent problem with fan noise. I'm told it works just fine but it's very very audible during intense situations. Something that can be very off-putting if you're playing a game or watching a video. This card cost around 299 US dollars at launch or 270 British pounds for this specific MSI reference model here in the UK. But today, I paid just £15 for it on eBay. After hopefully resolving any issues, we'll then be seeing what it can do as far as modern gaming performance is concerned, but first it's time to see if it works. If you find yourself in a similar situation, then it's always a good idea to test your hardware before opening it up and cleaning it. If you don't and it doesn't work after putting it back together, you'll never know if it arrived broken or you broke it. To test this today, I'll be adding it to my Ryzen 5 1600 test setup with 8 gigs of 3000 MHz DDR4, which will let the card reach its maximum potential when it comes to gaming performance. So it turns out the card does indeed work, but it sounds like this. And that's even before we've got into a game. It's so loud that after running it last night for a couple of hours, I went to my car this morning and my neighbours asked me why I was, quote, vacuuming at 11pm. See, I live in a semi-detached house, like this crudely drawn example here, so any loud noises can be quite easily heard through the walls. One noise complaint later, and it was time to work out what the issue was. So let's take it apart and talk more about it. Now this Cayman based GPU along with its bigger brother, the 6970, faced a few delays before launch which is never a promising sign. Not to mention they had some fierce and ultimately superior competition in Nvidia's GTX 500 series offerings. These days I'm not sure how things stand because of drivers etc, but back then it was a pretty competitive market at this price point. An interesting must mention point about the 6950 is that it can also be unlocked to match that of HD6970 level performance. This is done by flashing the BIOS of the 6970 onto the 6950 using a free program like ATI Flash, in turn unlocking extra shaders. I think this was made impossible with newer 6950s, so we'll look into that a little later on. But because this is a reference model with a dual BIOS switch, it should be capable here. First though, let's finish cleaning this thing up. After reassembling it and putting it back in the system, the noise persisted. Interestingly, getting to this point in the driver installation resolved the issue. Now you may think that this was an obvious fix, install the drivers and it sort of regulates the fan control, but installing the drivers first time round before cleaning it up didn't make any difference to the racket that this thing made. So I guess it just needed a good clean after all, and that in combination with the installation of the drivers made sure that this thing was running okay. It's amazing what some people will get rid of before assessing all of their options. So before we attempt the unlocking of this card, let's see how it performs with a few very modern games. Here are the specs of this MSI reference model. Now I've run the card at the stock settings first of all before we attempt any aforementioned unlocking to get an idea of performance. I've started off with Apex Legends here, a very popular battle royale type title. As you can see it did run fine at 1080p, although we did have to turn things down to the low settings. The frame rate then differed between sort of 30 and 60 FPS depending on the area of the map and of course this will change too depending on what's going on on screen. I don't really consider this to be a particularly demanding game but it might give some older hardware a run for its money in some more intense situations. Now when it came to Far Cry 5 we had to turn the resolution down to 900p in order to exceed 30 frames per second, a target that I've attempted to achieve throughout all of today's tests because 60 is a little bit unrealistic for this card. Now at 900p we were seeing between 30 and 40 frames per second on average with the stock settings and I think 
in terms of performance, uh, this is sort of playable on this old GPU. Everything was set to low and any form of anti-aliasing was indeed turned off. Now just like Apex Legends, the uh, on-screen action may change the frame rate, but I suppose you could say that for every game out there. Far Cry 5 is a game that's particularly action packed though, so just bear in mind that you may see a few drops below 30 FPS in some instances. Now when it came to Just Cause 4, it was a pretty sad story here. 480p was the selected resolution, because at 720p or 1080p we were seeing even less frames. But even at 480p here, the frame rate was by no means playable. Now driver support I believe ended for this card a while ago. I couldn't find any later drivers than ones that were released back in 2016. So you're going to have a hard time um, with some games. Uh, they will give you warnings like, oh, your graphics card is below the minimum requirements, like Battlefield 5, which, by the way, will start, but decided to freeze for me at the main menu. So just bear that in mind too. But you may be surprised to know that Metro Exodus, the latest in the series and probably the newest game on today's list, ran at 1080p with at least 30 frames per second, albeit with the low settings. Now this surprised me, but I wasn't too surprised, shall we say, because I have read that the minimum system requirements consist of an i5-4440 and a GTX 670, which struck me as quite odd because I didn't think that the 670 would be able to run a game like this. Now that I see the 6950 can, I hold better hopes for those aforementioned minimum requirements, so that'll probably be something I'll have to test out in the future, just to see how accurate they are. With the 6950 though, well, it was a pretty decent performance here. There were some massive frame drops in areas, but in terms of an overall average frame rate, yes it will be above 30 FPS, but it's those frame drops and stutters that may put you off entirely because they are quite frequent. Let's just say the game ran a lot better than I was expecting with this nearly nine year old card. Next up though, I wanted to see if we could unlock this card to run at 6970 speeds. There's a great guide on Tech Power Up that's very simple to follow. It just involves downloading a simple program called AMD Flash, saving the current BIOS on your card in case anything goes wrong, downloading a 6970 BIOS, loading that from the program's menu, and then clicking Program. What this will do is it will take about 10 seconds to flash your card, and all you have to do after that is restart the system. When you turn everything back on, you can head on over to GPU-Z, for example, and it will tell you that you now have 1536 shaders as opposed to the original count. Clock speeds and memory clocks will also be increased. Now, this added a few degrees to our stock temperature, but it seems as though things were pretty stable, and I decided to jump back into Metro Exodus, first of all, to see if the card was indeed stable and whether or not we saw an improvement over our original frame rate. Now, I'm happy to report that there was a slight increase in average performance, but the best thing about unlocking this card was the fact that it reduced a lot of the stuttering that we were seeing before. Before we unlocked the card, we were seeing drops to perhaps 12 or 13 frames per second in some instances during this opening level, so I can't speak for the rest of the game. But after unlocking it, well, most of those frame drops were indeed gone. Now, unfortunately, we didn't see much of an improvement in Just Cause 4. The average frame rate did increase, but I think it's more of a driver support issue here, and perhaps the game is having a bit of a problem with the two gigs of VRAM as well. We actually saw a more stable frame rate in Far Cry 5 as well, we kept the 900p resolution with the low settings and anti-aliasing off, but our average frame rate was at least 40 here as opposed to the mid 30s, which was a minor but pretty welcomed change in performance I have to say, because when things heat up a bit more, then you aren't going to see as many frame drops. Now I decided to try Shadow of the Tomb Raider as well, and this is all I got. I'm not joking, the game loaded and uh, this is all I saw. The opening cutscenes didn't work, the screen was just black and this was as far as we got in terms of gameplay. After this it's interesting because the system actually crashed to a blue screen and so I had to restart. It was after that that I decided to return the 6950 to its original BIOS because it obviously wasn't all that stable. Not just because of what was happening in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but because everything started to seem a little bit laggy. For example, the Windows Explorer just decided to not respond either, and there were a few different things going on on screen with lagging, um, 
just things that didn't seem quite right. I don't think this was entirely stable, but that's why they put a BIOS switch on these old cars in case you do mess things up. Flashing it back was simple, just load up the old BIOS, flashed it, restarted the system, and everything was back to normal. To make sure it was still stable, I decided to fire up an old game, Bioshock Infinite, and with the highest settings, I played it for a couple of hours just fine with no problems. All in all, I'm glad we managed to fix the fan issue, and I'm glad it was such a simple process. In terms of how one of these performs in 2019 though, well, not very well. You're going to run into issues with driver um, support and performance in general. But there will be a few surprises amongst the results, like Metro Exodus for example. Anyway, with all that said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I really do enjoy fixing up these old cars and I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you did, leave a like on it. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see all of you in the next one.